took only by the grace of God to really get me to break free from that. Mm -hmm. And then when Jesus shows you truth, it just, it was almost so hard to comprehend because in the gay lifestyle, you're taught you're born this way. There's nothing that can change you. That was my, actually my question, <laughs> my next question to ask you. Uh, are, Christ, are people born gay? You know what? Because the, the Bible says that people are born sinners. Right. Then if people are born sinners, then why is homosexuality a sin when you're born that way? Can you, can, you answer, can you speak to that question a little bit? Address it. Okay, you know what? There is a lot of, on the research on this, a lot of people have done some studies on this that a lot of them are not actually born gay. But yes, we are born in sinful nature, so it's just easier to become one. And it's also how your environment is being brought up. Because I would say I was never had that my dad was never in part of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I seen him, you know, did things, but he was never really that father figure I was looking for, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, God bless my mother. I mean, she did what she could as a single mother, you know, raising my older sister and myself. But for me, it was more. It was just easier to get into that lifestyle, and that's where it's from. Your, it's from deception, not from conception. Wow. Right? So, and either way, even if we hypothetically go with people are born that way, Jesus says you have to be born again and be born again of water and of spirit in John chapter 3, verses 3 and 5. Uh -huh. Right? That's right. For sure. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to go through some scriptures that his blood can save anybody. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. Uh -huh. Right? Um, but you have to really seek him and really go on to him. Because uh -huh. there's only, once you die, there's only two places you're going to go, heaven or the lake of fire. Yes. Right? So, mm. so actually, let us go to First Corinthians. This is what the Lord always told me. Okay. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covenants, nor drunkenness, nor revealers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. See, again, here we see abusers of themselves with mankind and even the effeminate. That actually means that if you're a man acting like a woman or have feminine qualities. Yeah. Dress feminine? Yeah. 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 And even for the woman, too, for them to become more masculine yes it's not really biblical mm -hmm. right and again god said they're not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven so if they're not going to enter heaven where else are they going to go like a fire to, to hell but i always loved verse 11 and such were some of you but ye are washed and but ye are sanctified and but are justified in the name of our lord jesus and by the spirit of our god I think it's pretty interesting that particular verse. It was one of my favorites. And it says, in times past, yes. that was how you were. But yes. now, yes. you have been washed, sanctified, justified. Right. And I've actually tried to speak to a lot of gay pastors and even gay Christians, professing Christians, about how come Jesus can je cleanse me from all this? And yet you're promoting it. Mm. You know, they still can never give me an answer. Is it possible to be a gay Christian according to scripture? No, absolutely not. That's like saying, can you still be a murderer and still be a Christian? No. Mm. And unfortunately, there are people that are going to say, you can, it's not a big deal. Um, God made them whatever they want. And according to the scriptures, God said no. Hmm. And either this is absolutely correct and everybody else is wrong or Possibly those people are wrong, and this is not correct. Mm -hmm. But because if I know that Jesus is absolutely true, because there's no lies in him, he was never wrong on anything, and he is perfect, and he's holy, and he's God Almighty, I think it's time to follow his ways, his teachings, his way of life. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and it's also, too, they're trying to take the grace of God and make it lavishness. Yes. So, Can you share that scripture with us? In, in the last days, I think it's in the book of Jude. Yes. That uh, in the last days, they'll take the grace of God 
the grace of the gospel. Yes. And it turned it into lasciviousness, which is a license to sin. Right. Yeah. Jude, there's only one chapter there, so. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by the God the Father and preserved them in Christ Jesus Christ, and I call mercy unto you and peace and love multiplied. Beloved, when I gave you all the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and, and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept unawares who were before of old ordained to condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance through once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward, and destroyed them and believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he have reserved them in everlasting chains under darkness unto that judgment of that great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them like men are giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth an example of suffering of the vengeance of the internal fire. Wow. Okay. That, I believe that uh, speaks for itself. Oh, yeah, for and sure. And gives Sodom and Gomorrah as yeah. an example yeah. of the, the, the judgment. Yeah, and if you read, uh, I think it's Genesis 18 and 19, yeah. God just, like, destroyed it. Yes. And to really say that God loves it and supports it, you have to understand Sodom and Gomorrah mm -hmm. because they were doing, which is also part of witchcraft as well. Uh -huh. I'm not sure many people know that, but living that same life lifestyle is also a form of witchcraft mm -hmm. because it's going against what God has ordained. Mm -hmm. right? I think that's a, it's another gospel. Yes. That people are preaching. Right, for sure. That God supports this. But according to scripture, yeah. God makes it clear that yes. this is a sin. Oh, no. And I want to actually bring you to um, 2 Corinthians. Uh, let's go to chapter 11. I'm going to say verse 4 first. For if he that cometh preach, preacheth another Jesus with whom we have not preached, or if ye received another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not heard, except you might as well bear with them. Mm. And then if you read verses 13 and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an, an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing that his ministries also be transformed. Ministers of righteousness, whose and shall be according to their works. So, when you're being hearing another Jesus or another gospel, and it's not lining up with the true gospel, mm -hmm. then it's another gospel. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, to a great extent, church history has just been taken a compromise. Yeah. Because most of them. And let's face it, most of them probably want more money. They don't want to say, oh, you're in sin, or we're going to rebuke you. Mm -hmm. If we really are truly born again of the spirit of the one true living God, we're supposed to be telling them the truth, no mm -hmm. matter what the cost is. Yeah. Because we're supposed to care for them and love them. Mm -hmm. But love is also not just saying, oh, what you're feeling is right. Pamper, pampering people. Right. Yeah. Right? It's more telling the truth because it's easy to tell the truth and be hated and be balked mm -hmm. than compromise with the word and lie and then going down to the lake of fire. Yeah, it's all yeah, all liars all have their liars part. have their part in the lake of fire. You're right, right about for that. Sure. You know the interesting thing is that Jesus said in uh, John chapter seven seven that he said the world cannot hate you but hates me because I testify of it that its deeds are evil. Yeah. So Jesus Christ condemned sin. Yeah. And when he, when John was put in prison in Mark chapter 1, he, Jesus Christ went into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He says, repent. Right. For the kingdom of God is at hand and believe the gospel. Right. So we've got to repent. Yeah. And that's actually what's missing in a lot of the churches is repentance. Yeah. And when Christians will say this, oh, you don't need to repent. All you have to do is just call upon his name and don't do nothing. 
Mm. And I always ask this, do you think John the Baptist was a heretic for preaching repentance? Wow. I mean, there has to be a change. Mm -hmm. First, it comes from the heart. Yeah. You have to recognize that you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. And then once you understand that, and then you can receive God's grace, grace. and then you repent, follow his ways, his teachings, his practices. Mm -hmm. Right? And um, but there is also a tradition, and also in the saying the gay lifestyle or any type of sinful lifestyle is that God cannot save you. There's nothing that can save you. And I'm going to show you something in Isaiah 43, 25 and 26, verse 25 and 26. I even I am that he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance and let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. You see, God can cling out your sins. Mm -hmm. And even Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, Come up now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Through your sins be scarlet as they shall be white as snow. Through they be red like circum crimson, they shall be white as wool. So he can cleanse you from all those things. Mm -hmm. Even the book of Psalms. Throughout the whole Psalms, there's a lot of forgiveness that God can do. I'll just show you Psalm 51. Having mercy upon me, O God, according to the loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot up my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee there are only I have sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou just justice. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And you can almost read the whole chapter of it. It talks about all his transgressions and even a lot of psalms talks about that uh -huh. and even if we go into the new testament i'm going to show you something in colossians okay here it is speaking about jesus here in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins see only the blood can cleanse all the sins because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Mm -hmm. right? And that comes part of your repentance. right? I mean, I understand we're going to make mistakes. Yes, we may slip up here and there. But when we are truly born again, we fall, stay away from the evil. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jesus said, there are few be there to find a narrow path. Wow. You know, the, the, the name Jesus itself means the Lord saves. Yes. That is, that is the... The miraculous thing about the whole virgin birth of yes. Jesus Christ living a perfect life and dying on the cross for our sinners right. is that he came into the world to save sinners yeah to break the chains of sin yeah. that's what he did in many people's lives for sure and that I never understood that aspect of Jesus until he really showed me that mm. that his blood is holy um, it cleanses all sins because there was no sins in him there was no sins that's why he was a perfect sacrifice yes because I have always thought, like, who was Jesus? Like, I've always heard he was a good person, he was a good teacher, he might have been sinless, but you just never understand until he reveals himself. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he's alive and he's there forevermore, mm -hmm. right? He is going to judge all the things. Because in Romans 14, oh, let's see here. Okay, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost set naughty, or sorry, at naught thy brother? For he shall stand before this judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account to himself to God. So, interesting. Every action that you do, you're going to give an account to God. Every word you speak, you're going to give an account to God. Anything you've done. And mm -hmm. remember in the book of Proverbs, 
15 verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. So wow. it doesn't matter if you're in a little restaurant or in the store here, or if you're in one of those brothels, the Lord is recording everything. And if you're not accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and repent and following Him, your name will not be in the book of life. It will be going down to the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. And these warnings in the scriptures are, are not necessarily to drive people away from God. Right. But lovingly, just like a firefighter running into a building to yeah. knocking on every door. Right. Those screams are to wake up the families to get out of the burning house. Yes, and build sure. it because there's fire. Yeah. And God is a God is a loving father who wants no one to perish, but all to come to repentance. Right, for sure. And um I do hope that people please just seek him in yourself. You don't even have to take my words for it, but look into the Bible. Read it and pray and seek him. Because ultimately we all want the truth. Mm -hmm. We will all want to know something better because there's more to this world other than this world. There's a spiritual world where God wants you to have heaven and earth join him. That's why Jesus said there would be many mansions. Yeah. Right? But a lot of it, you have to really seek him for truth. We're saying this not out of hate, but because of love. Mm -hmm. Right? And I know there's quite a few people on Facebook that I know that lived the get life style now has come to the Lord. Brother Jane Carty is one of them. Wow. Out in the, close to Kingston, Ontario. Mm. You know, Brother Jay just stay strong in the Lord. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord for that encouragement, too. For sure. To that brother. For sure. And your testimony is an encouragement. And it's 